Maddie, we're up to episode number six, my friend, on The Mentors. But you know what's exciting? What's that? We've got a guest in the studio today. We're very, very excited about the next person coming on. We have uh, Mr. Nick Pappas, Century 21 in Maroubra. Uh, Nick, tell us a little bit about yourself because you've got an interesting story. Um, you were number one agent for Century 21 for a number of years at a Fairfield. And then, what, three odd years ago, you decided to... I'm getting out of there and I'm starting from zero in Maroubra and your business has exploded in the last three years. So maybe give the listeners a little bit about who you are and what you've been up to uh, in your real estate career. Yeah, hi guys. Uh, thanks again for having me on board. Um, but yeah, look, started out at Fairfield. Um, that was where my real estate career happened. And um, I think we're in looking back, I wish I sort of moved to the east a lot earlier. Um, it was just the only place that accepted me to work. So, uh, I but you were traveling like what from Malabar yeah. to Fairfield every day? Yeah, I was work. traveling to Fairfield. Would you do that, Matt? Yeah, cool. <laughs> yeah, was good. yeah look, I have no regrets. Um, it, it taught me a lot. Um, I think uh, I learned how to work in a very diverse market because yeah. we do have homes in Fairfield that range from you know 150,000 at the time up to a million dollars when good I first training. started. Yeah. So, it was awesome training, uh, made me realize you know where I was going. Um, in, in, in my career. Yep. So I think I learned a lot in Fairfield that I brought with me into Maroubra. Yeah, um, right. And the reason I did come to Maroubra, was just, it was just around lifestyle. Um, and it goes to show that, I suppose, in real estate, um, as long as you follow the basics, doesn't matter where you do it. Doesn't it, matter where you are. Yeah. Um, you're going to make money, you're going to be successful. So true. Uh, and as long as your intentions yeah. like always right with what you're doing. So Yeah, it's all about reputation, isn't it? Yeah. And, um, so Nick's a bit of a... I live not too far from where Nick works yeah, and yeah. I, definitely a bit of a local identity yeah. down there. <laughs> You're the mayor so of uh, Ranwick. He hasn't taken long to put a stamp on from Fairfield to Maroubra. That's right, exactly. Um, he's, yeah. been, he's, been, he's been actually killing it. And, and Nick, tell us, um, how's, how's it been going for you for the last three years there in uh, Yeah, in, look, in it's been, it was an interesting time. When I first opened up the office in Maroubra, I think we were in a marketplace that there was not a lot of stock and a lot of buyers yeah um so people thought i was a bit crazy at the time yeah. <laughs> thinking you know you're not going to make any money you're not going to do well but again just keeping to the basic principles of real estate mm. um i think that's what's you know driven my business to where yeah. it is today um it's also helped me with recruitment and you know uh, yeah like because that's all a big part nick yeah. i've heard um too from some of the things i've heard you speak and so about you're passionate about seeing other people succeed, aren't you? 100%. That's where I come from, that same space, yeah, and I know yeah. where that's where Claudio comes from, <laughs> yeah. right? Not that... And if that is an intention, you're going to get everyone around you wanting to be part of what you're doing. And it's probably... Yeah. Like, I never thought of it that way, but, yeah. you know, no, now that, that you're saying that... I can um, just tell by your nature too, yeah. like, it's not all about you. No, it I, definitely no, I've, I've seen businesses over the years, the smartest person in the room, um, it destroys a business because yeah. it's all about them. Correct. And, um, you know, we are speaking before about um, certain things in the marketplace and agents and what have you. If you're prepared to share stuff around... <clears throat> um, they're the agents that you see that continue to grow, right. share with their team and share around the office and all and that. And they don't get up and leave you after you've spent time, you know, creating that profile for them. Yeah, well, building which the is something loyalty. that you're doing here yep. with, with the agency, which yep. is, I think, awesome and, yep. you know, created a great thing in our industry as well. No, thank you. Yeah. Hey, um, before we get into your question, because that's what The Mentors is all about, right? Yeah, that is. <laughs> um, just maybe, Matt may or may not know this, Matt, but... Um, if you don't mind, can I share this? And if we if we don't want it, we'll edit it out, of course. But uh, you know, before you opening up Maroubra, um, you almost had like a bit of a breakdown. Um, you were working extremely long hours, and do you just want to share? Because I think a lot of agents can relate. You know, where they burn mm-hmm. out, um, and we hear this like grind, hustle, million yeah. dollar agent, all that sort of stuff, which is all wonderful, but. You know, you've been there and, uh, you know, you nearly had a bit of a health scare with all that happening. Yeah. Do you just want to share a little bit what happened during yeah, those times? Yeah, no, that's, I'm, I'm cool with that because I think that's a good way of... Um, I love to help others and for me, if I can help one person in all of that, that means a lot. So, you know, t- to me, it was working myself into the ground as you literally hear that. Um, it, it wasn't... It was my own doing, yep. but it's what you make yourself believe you have to do, if that makes sense. Yep. Yeah. So, you know, we hear a lot the of these... Pressure from the industry. Yeah. The industry itself, but I think, uh, you know, a lot of things started to change in our industry, right? And it became um, something that, you know, the million dollar agent yep. tag um, or the hustle, the grind. And, 
you know, it's hard to do that when you've, it's all right when you're single and you've got no, no family, kids. no kids and, you know, your wife doesn't complain. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't hear that either, yeah. that video. But, um, you know, once you start, you know, your life changes. I, I, I yeah. got into real estate at 21 and when this happened to me, I was 30. Mm, and, wow. you know, from 21 to 30, I, a lot happened. You know, I had three children. I had, wow. I was married, yep. bought a house, renovated, sold homes. Like, you know, I was trying to do so much. Yeah, yep. um, And it was only just to keep growing, growing, growing. But the, the, the worst part was that I risked my health yeah, in, in all a, of that. Yeah, big problem. Um, and I think the big thing that we have in, this, in our industry at the moment is the glitz and glamour of it. Yeah. It's not the actual, uh, you know, go in and do what you need to do for eight hours a day, but do it for eight hours of the day and then go home to your family. Correct, uh, yeah. Or go home to your girlfriend or your wife or so your mates that. or whatever you're going to do. Yeah. But there's no need for eight hours of glitz and glamour and yep. get to the end of the day and then realise I didn't make my calls, I didn't do yeah, the basics yeah. that I had to do. Like uh, someone mentioned it uh, to me a while ago, some of the real estates are like adult daycare centres. Yeah, you know, where um, people go in, clock in, you know, entertain yeah. themselves for eight hours and then go home. home. Yeah. Um, exactly right. You know, you're either in this business to be successful or yeah. not. Yeah. Uh, you can't half do it. People, you get lost in the system otherwise. Well, I think if you if you were a lawyer or, or, or an accountant or, you know, you studied at university to get a degree, you wouldn't be going to work for eight hours a day to show off on Instagram or Facebook or anything like that. You know, you'd be taking it a lot more serious. And yeah. I think... That's another big problem in our industry. That totally. We had people just anyone could join our industry, and unfortunately, that did yep. make us work harder, yes. which is good. But you know, talking people complain about what they pay agents, but when you really look at what an agent's doing for you, mm. so how did you turn that around? And how, who, just who, mindset. Um, a guy that I worked very closely with um, was Jed Xavier. Yeah. Um, who, and you know, the great thing is about Jed Xavier is, is all about. Revive and yeah. live and okay. and he's actually released a white paper, Matt. I don't know. It's, yeah, it's, it's I think it's coming out this week. A white yep. paper on um, a lot of like the health of agents at the moment. Oh, it, really? It, it's the not in a good state. Are actually, really scary. And you know, I, I do a lot of keynotes. I, I work with a lot of major franchises, and hmm. um, you know, I've, I've been lately. They've been saying to me, Claudio, in your keynote for this year, can you make sure don't push too much hustle, don't push too much grind? And I was like. What do you mean by that? And they said, well, we've had a lot of agents um, take their life suicide. And, uh, you know, because a lot of this pressure and expectation that's that's, that, that, that happens, you know, and, and this game can sometimes do it to you. Um, and I'm, I'm really excited that he's, he's brought that to the forefront for us to read about what's happening in the, the health of agents. And that white paper has been released, as I said, as probably today, I think it was going to come out. And, um, yeah, it's interesting. So, but it's, I'm so happy for you, my friend. It's good, Nick. You, 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 you pulled out and good you know. balance now. You feel? Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. It's not <laughs> he bad. does. Okay. Could you beach you swimming? Me, oh, that's right. That's you why you moved to Maroubra to catch a few waves. Did you? <laughs> probably not so good. I'm just right. reflecting on um, my 30 years, and I, I've never really. I think what's helped me stay like focused is I. I'd actually never look at the competition, and yeah. I don't look at what they're doing and. Try and re- I've always just tried to bet my, beat myself yeah, each year. Your bottom year. line and that's it. Yeah. yeah. What did I do last year? What did I do the next year? What did I do this year? What do I want to do next? And if I kept growing against myself, and because pe- people come and go around you, you know, there's a lot of people making noise on Facebook and all that. You scratch your surface and not doing the business. I, was, I just kept I, – I used to use scoreboards as my my, my actual scoreboard, signboards yeah. as my scoreboard. Yeah, yeah, So yeah. the more boards I had up in an area – if I had 10 a month sort of thing, that was good. I was excited. Yeah. And I kept, if I went down to five, I had to get back to 10. <clears throat> but I didn't care if Ray White or Hookers or Rain Horn or whoever but had you, you, like, like your own competition was you. That's yeah. Because yeah. I worked in a different space to where everyone was working. I was in the networking and referral. Yeah. So And then repeat clients and I think then the coffee shops homes. in Randwick miss you at the exactly. moment. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, so... Yeah. That was easy space. To, so I was never going to compete against anyone because I wasn't getting this. I wasn't pitching for the listings, like waiting for the call-ins and all that stuff. And then, so I think if that's some advice, clouds out to the listeners to yeah. don't compete against anyone else. Just be yourself. Just keep competing against, against yourself. yourself. Absolutely. And then you're not having to keep up with the Joneses, I guess. Which yeah, hundred percent right. That's what I was getting. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I on see Facebook why somebody and Instagram. Would say, I've got to. Go on Facebook and do this. Or I've got to do this yeah, on LinkedIn. I've got, to, I've got to drive that type of car. I've got to wear that type of suit. Yeah. You know. And to- you know the best thing too for me. I've only ever done what's in best interest of the client. So mm. it, I don't need to be on Facebook if it's not promoting the client. Correct. Correct. So when the intention, like you said before, is right. Yeah. 
then you don't have the problem. Yeah, so, and you know what the funny thing is, and uh, a lot of the time I get, you know, some people going, Claire, I never see your kids on, or, or, or my wife, a lot of my Instagram or, or Facebook posts, I said, I always say like, you know, I will serve you at my highest level in terms of what I do, which is helping you stay motivated, giving you some ideas, giving you strategy. I will serve you at that level, but I need to have a bit of sanity about my family. Do you yeah. know what I mean? I've got to keep something that's right, personal something to that's me yours. because once you expose everything out to I everybody, think so true. You, then everyone knows everything. Like I know there's some people, you know, will disagree with me and go, oh, I think people want to know who you are and your kids and your family in the kitchen cooking and all that. But that's not me serving you at my highest level. I totally you know I mean? agree with you. And, um, you know, I'd like my kids to have their own identity too. Yeah. Because um, as soon as you start cleaning, they go like, oh, you know, they have to live under their Claudio and Cena's, you Cor- know, kids. Correct. I'm Claudio and seen as daughter or son, son yep. um, they're best off to get their own identity yeah. um, and you know your wife and my wife we, we know each other well um, personally outside of out of work for years <coughs> yep and they run you, they have their own lives that's exactly. the best thing and you don't need that to leave her for business no nah. because they're not going to be standing at an open house your kids aren't going to be there so that's irrelevant right exactly i totally agree and the totally people agree. buy you they buy you irrespective of all the bells and whistles, whistles. that's exactly right yep. okay well, um, I think your car alarm's going off, Nick. Yeah, that's <laughs> it's a big car. <laughs> no, this is good. We like to keep it real and live. That's what the mentor's all about, bringing the Absolutely. real back in real estate. What is that noise? So, <laughs> so uh, tell me, um, a, is it a fire drill? No, it's okay. We, no, there's a, like a whole thing just closed over there. Oh, right. Okay. okay. Fire alarm again. Yeah. This is good. This is the way we like to do it. Maybe we put this on Instagram when the stories. the fire alarm goes off, it shuts that. <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying it shuts I'm just letting you know. Um, well, we know why we're here, Nick. Okay. And I know Clinton's our audio man and he'll do the best to fix all of this up. Let's keep rolling. Let's keep rolling. I can hear you. You can hear us? Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, beautiful. Um, Nick, you're here to give us the pressing question. What's the question you want, you want to ask Matt Just and I today? Just let me pull that up before we start. A bit of humour in it. We can work in any market conditions, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Rain, hail or fire. High interest rates, low interest rates, high clearance rates, low clearance rates. <laughs> We're just waiting for the firemen to burst through the doors in a minute. Yeah. <laughs> so, Nick, like tell us. On, tell us. Oh, uh, my God. Look, for me... Your question. Just watching both of you... So, I've been in real estate for, you know, 15 years, just on 15 years, and obviously seeing you both grow, like, phenomenally. I know you've been doing it for 30 years, but I've been monitoring you for 15 yeah. years, right? Really? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, you know... That's scary, Nick. It is, yeah, in a good way. Don't worry, I'm not that Greek. But um, I suppose just watching you both grow and being able to just see where you are today and what you have, like what's been that key to success? Like I know you spoke about your family and your, and your balance just very quickly, but yep. just watching you both become these phenomenal people in our industry. Um, Look, it's um, great, very great hard. question. My, my focus purely been everyone else because um, I'm... I've made a lot of money out of real estate. Yeah. Um, invested it early on when my family yep. were really, you know, said you just got to, you know, you can't just make this money and not have a reason. Yeah. So that helped me along the way. Then I thought, you know what, I've actually somehow people tell me I've got an ability to impact their lives. So mm-hmm. I learnt that years ago. So I thought, you know what, the more I can impact people around me, like if I'm in a business where everyone wins, I'll just keep impacting people around me because... They, that changes their lives and that you, you've got to be able to leave some crumbs on the table for other people, right? People get really greedy in this business and they want to take it all. Take. I've found the more I've given out, the more help I've given out, my career is better. I can mm. walk anywhere in all offices, everywhere I go into the marketplace and agents always want to talk to me, competitors, everything, mm. and say, hey, hey, can I have a coffee with this? I, I was up shopping the other day and a competitor just grabbed me and goes, I'll take you for a coffee. I've been competing against this guy for 25 years. Ended Feels up good. having a coffee. He just wanted to say, oh, guys, bought me a coffee. And, like, we've been competitors in lounge rooms. But that's the relationship with the competitors. Um, I've never had – everyone I used to give 50% commission to on any property I ever had, never want to screw anyone. In my own office, take the commission. I don't care. If the vendor's getting the win, that's the best you thing. You were happy. Yeah. And with colleagues and being able to grow people, it's so exciting when they come to you and they say – I wouldn't be here because if it wasn't for your impact, that's mm. what makes me get out of bed every day. And yeah, it's good. And to then know. that your you, your wealth and all that sort of stuff just keeps happening somehow in the background. Like, and that's really honestly, my wife will tell you, and everyone, all my friends will tell you, I've just doesn't change you how many zeros extra in your bank account. Doesn't change you as a person. You're better off to have 
you know, like just be comfortable but have everyone else winning as well. Mm. You can all win together because that's what happens. Otherwise, I, I, you know, I go and get all the trimmings and all the fancy stuff and I've got no one to really sort of run with me. Yeah. I'd rather run with all the same people that I can run with, if that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, I agree. Let's go away together, stay in the same hotel, stay in this, stay in that, rather than saying, I want to only do this, I want to only do That's just not what I'm about. It you wasn't know? what you're Yeah, doing. exactly. Yeah. And, I think and, and, and you very know, noticeable. Sorry, yeah. it's just very noticeable that you say that. Like, just seeing the way you are and the way you've built what you have today. Yeah, and I think, look, Claudia and I have been... Just the fact we're actually sitting here, we're not sitting here because we did go to kindergarten together. I don't know if you know that. But <laughs> so I mean, just a Coogee. Woo! Claudio is oh, the same wow. person in kindergarten that he is now. And I remember his dad, like, was a hard-working guy driving around, delivering his mum. Mm. And he had kids. He, Claudio was always the one that would say, I've got to go home and help my sister. Like, this was when mm. we were 15. Mm. I've got to go. I've got to make sure I'm home for the kids. Mum wants me. I've got to be here. He was like mum and dad in his family. At yeah. 15 years and old. that quality I saw was, and then we just, you know, he actually told me only last time <laughs> we met that I was actually the reason he got into real estate. It's true, Which man. I didn't actually even know that. I um, owe this to you, buddy. <laughs> and, um, and he's got the same friends and I've got the same friends we went to school with. Yeah. That's my barometer. And I've got all the same friends I started in real estate with Nick 30 mm. years ago. Mm. I went to tech with Mary Howell and, you know, mm. all yep. the agents and everyone went to tech. Yeah, We've yeah. still got the same friends. Yeah. Um, and that's Scotty McGuinness and all that. Yeah. Like Alex Pavlakis. And John Holgate. John Holgate. So, he, he, he said, he goes, I can't believe you boys are together. John Holgate <laughs> yeah. on Facebook last oh, night okay. <laughs> with a mentors page. Yeah. So that's a good thing. Um, I mean, for me personally, I've worked really hard at my home life. I'm, I'm married, still got the same wife after 24 years. Um, and that's a big thing. You've got stability at home. You've got stability in the workplace. Totally. Look, really, Nick, that's my favourite saying, one. you know, is what, what, what you practice in private will be revealed in public, right? Acts of excellence, buddy. Yeah. It's very so true. whatever you're doing outside, away from real estate, seems to be somehow some people think they need to come to work and put a cape on and a, and a, a mask and try and be someone else. I'm the same person at home I am at work, and I think, that's probably what I pick up with your. I, I'd say you wouldn't be too dissimilar. Um, and you know, family's important. Is it, it is. Friends are important, um, and your work colleagues are important. And so, if I've got a work colleague that's having a few dramas, um, it's outside of real estate. I'm going to go and see them. In, in I don't care if it's Sunday or whatever. Um, you make that's, time. That's just what you do. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Yeah, just being human. It's you being yeah. who you are. And people want to be around you if you have those – if you genuinely care for people and they can see you genuinely want to grow them. I mean, I'm just blown away about just when we started up this business, um, the amount of people that I sort of didn't even really knew I impacted over the years gone by that have said, I've lost that, I want that impact. I don't, And I didn't even really think I was impacting yeah. them. It was just, no, you sat down with me five years ago and you spent half an hour and that half an hour to them was, it was just oh. part of my role. But to them, they, they clawed onto that and they, like, it's really intriguing, you know, when you see these sorts of things happen. Yeah. And it's very similar what you do, Nick, as well, because I see a lot of that in you in, in terms of, you know, spending time meeting people, even from other companies, your competitors, people, you know, different franchises, which is really, which is, you know, really super cool. Um, Matt, question for you, and then I'll answer your question. Sure, Claire. Um, as well. Uh, but Matt, as you've grown so quickly, your business, yep. um, one of the things is, you know, as you become busier, people become less accessible. Do you find that you're becoming less accessible in your tribe of people that you work with? Like- yeah, no, it's a really good point. And that was probably the first thing <clears throat> that I said to the team. Um, I, need, I, I built this at the beginning um, knowing that scale, I needed yep. scale around me. Yep. So I don't do a lot of – see, in, in what I do is I don't do any of the non-dollar productive activities in my role. Yeah. So forget like listing and selling non-dollar – when you're managing, I don't do anything that's non-dollar pro- – I just have to sign a whole lot of documents then. Yeah. You probably, guys probably didn't even notice. I yep. emailed, you know, Michelle there. She's bored of me and I've signed them. She's come back out, scanned them and sent them off. I just can't be – I can't be stuck in that space. Yes, you know what I mean? yes, yes. Everything that's non-dollar productive, um, and I don't have a specific an as- assistant, but I've got like four or five different people doing like, different know, things. Okay. Yes. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, I, I can take the calls it, and I've, I've made sure yep. that I've been accessible all the way and I'll be as, as, as accessible in five years' time as I am today. Beautiful. Because that's what – this business is not a real estate's not a business. I hope every principal listens to this out there. 
where you can sit in a control room pushing buttons. I agree. Nick, yeah. you agree? You're a principal? You've got to touch the grass every um, morning, mate. You've got to touch yeah. the grass. <laughs> every um, I don't understand these principals that want to set up a business and then go away to Aspen skiing and think it's just going to run itself. <laughs> I didn't get it. I haven't been able to do <laughs> it. You figure it out. Maybe I haven't it? been able to work the secret <laughs> formula out. You don't ski. But, <laughs> no, exactly. And I don't go to Aspen. But um, uh, there's yeah. plenty of time for that later on when yeah. you've when you've grown. I mean, I guess that, you know, like in that. But they're also the ones that say they can't recruit. Yeah. People don't stay with them. Yes. And Because they're never in the business. They're when I there. analyse them, they go, oh, yes, I take my six, eight weeks. And that's fine from the family perspective. Yeah. But yeah. you can still have plenty of family time and balance it but also still be visible. Yeah, 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 absolutely. There's plenty of times team, in the yeah. year. Like with long weekends, I always shoot off over that. that that's when I'll pick, make a long weekend a four-day break yeah. rather than a one-day long weekend. Yeah. So I, And that's always family time. Um, and then around the Christmas times, there's always plenty of dead time between, totally. you know, weeks and Christmas weeks. Eve up to January the 15, 5th or whatever. Yeah. That's a good break. And then mid-year, everyone takes off. Good. So if you follow your real estate life like that. The trend, um, yeah. But when you're here, you're here. Yeah. And accessibility clouds. I mean, I've done some things on uh, with Elite actually around yep. you have to be accessible. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're not, who you are they going to talk to? You want to know your people that they can ring you up, text you, and you're going to get a reply. Or if they want to set up a meeting with you, they can set up a meeting with but you. That's super important. Exactly. But yeah. the other thing also too, you've got to be really good as empowering people. Yeah. Because you can't do everything. Right? Mm. I can't run, you know, no, I've got nine not. offices now, nearly um, two, 300 um, agents nearly. Mm. Um, we started in April. It's you know January. Um, so look, I can't, if I had to be everywhere, that's things will collapse. Way, like, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> what, what I've done is I've been able to get the best people around me and empower them. Yeah. Virtually saying you're running the business. Here's what you need to do, and I'm here when you need me. Yeah. Rather than trying to micro, so if I micromanage, I might don't need the people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got to yeah, be able so. to empower people, and you've got to find the right people that want to be empowered. Yep. So effectively, I've been lucky um, to get good people and keep them. Yeah. Um, and and a lot of people have followed me from various offices around around Australia. Yeah. Um, <coughs> different brands and everything. So, but that's going to purely come if you see. My job is I also grow the agents, but also grow the managers as well. Mm. Yeah. I, I'd be like to be. I think there's an old saying: is the quicker you can make yourself replaceable, means you've done your job. Job. That's right. Yeah. I don't want to be the smartest person in the room because I'm not. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> you know, I, I do know how to grow people. I do know how to build team and get market share immediately. That's mm. something I've, I've had the skill of somehow for years in real estate, but. Um, in terms of a lot smart stuff that needs to be done in the business when you're growing it, I'm not the guy I can tell you that. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> so you've got to find the right people to delegate. To work like and if delegate. you just focused on what you did best and had all the smart people, your accountants and your ops manager, whatever you've got in your team doing yeah. all the other stuff. And I, I'm not BHP, I don't have 50 people around me either, but mm. I've got the right people who can multitask. And yeah. do the right jobs, yeah. 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 No, right very job. good, very good, Matt. Um, Going back to your original question, um, and great answer, Matt. Uh, my my thing for me is when you know to become successful. I, I, I think you've got to have a real good clarity of where you want to go, Nick. And uh, I think I look at it this way: you've got to be, you got to get understanding busy work versus life's work. Mm. Understand what is your ten year big dream, and where do you see yourself? Highly successful people, high performers. One thing I do know is they can see themselves in the future of where they want to be. Yeah. And I think in real estate, many agents get caught up every day for 5, 10, 15, 20 years. And I know guys that have been in the industry for 35 years and they're still lifting and selling, meaning that they've been caught up in their busy work and then they're not finding that joy and contentment and then they sort of, you know, find themselves caught in their current reality trap, meaning they're earning $450,000 year on year because they haven't recognised what is it is they want to be in 10 years, which is your life's work. Yeah. And I would say to you is, you know, work out where do you want to see yourself in 10 years? What's the big dream? Put 20% of time each week towards your life's work because then it becomes intentional. If you don't, 10 years will go like that. I, I say to a lot of my clients, you're either doing three things. Either you're looking at building a business within a business, yeah. you're either becoming an entrepreneur or at the end of the day, you'll end up just selling a service, lifting and, you know, 
listing and selling is a service. Let's Correct. be honest. Yeah. At the end of the day, you've got to be thinking bigger than that if you want to find that joy and contentment in your life, whatever that may be. I've got a guy that's thinking in 10 years he wants to open up an orphanage in Cusco, right? but he can't do that today because the only way he's going to do that is he's got to do the things today, which is part of the busy work, but he's putting the time into his life's work. So in 10 years' time, he'll be in a position where he's sold real estate, grown his business, got three offices, four offices, but he'll have the capacity and the freedom to literally go and open up his big dream, which is an orphanage in Cusco. That's his big goal. And you think of anyone like uh, Bill Gates. His goal, yeah, was to build one of the best computer businesses and companies in the world, absolutely. But you know what his bigger dream was? Philanthropy, yeah. which is more about giving back to the less fortunate. So more than half of his profits go towards people in Africa, building up schools, mm. the less needy. So that's when you align yourself with your life's work versus the busy work. Busy work. So for me, it's I know what my life's work. I know it is what you said. It's like what all of us three are doing is trying to help become people become more successful and, and all of that. That's one thing. But also know where I want to be in 10 years, which is my life's work. And that i got to tell you, once you map that out very clearly, you got a clear roadmap, I jump out of bed every day versus people who are doing the grind every day after 10 years in real estate going, I don't find the joint contentment anymore. Now I'm just doing this to like get a paycheck. You know, it's just interesting listening to both of you answer that. You both answered it exactly the same way. Like whatever you've done, yep. you've done not just for you, you've done for others that Absolutely. will with you. So, well, and then you know, that's a big thing to take out of this it just, for me. Um, anyway. It just makes you... You can't buy the feeling of somebody coming up to you going, Matt, you spend an hour with me, I've changed my life, I'll, I'll be grateful, ever forever grateful for what you've done. Mm. That builds huge loyalty. It doesn't matter how big your checkbook you give them, you can't buy loyalty. It's that's not going to happen. You, yeah. Right? Yeah. you have to create it. Yeah. Right? And um, that's the reality of it. And if you haven't got people around you that are loyal that are going to go to war with you, it's very hard in business to be successful. I agree. You, you, you know, sometimes the enemy's in the bunker, which is not what you want. No, you know? exactly. But um, Nick, if I was to say to you, what would be your number one challenge that either you've got now or you've had over the last sort of four to five years or whatever, is there anything that stands out that we can maybe help you with today? Look, for me, um, in my new business role, as a business owner now, um, has just been being able to be as accessible as I want to be. Yep. Uh, I'm, I'm accessible, but... I feel that sometimes between clients, between, you know, and clients could be clients that you've known for 10 years. So it's yep. not easy to just say, guys, I'm going to delegate this yeah, to no, someone exactly. else, you know, because there's a relationship there as yep. well yeah. that you have to value. So I've got a lot of that. That's most of my clients. So for me, it's just been hard to delegate. Uh, okay, so are you worrying about being accessible to your staff or to your clients? Both, because okay. you're trying to balance it, if that yep. makes sense. Yep. So easy fix for that. Do you have an ideal week? Um, I like to think I do. So the answer is no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I'm going to say. <laughs> so, you ask. <laughs> so um, and I know that's a cliched thing, but yeah. I've got to tell you, I have an ideal week. It's grained in here. Yeah, yeah. I've done the same boring things for the last 15 years every week. And I'm, and I'm um, actually working towards that now. We were talking about that. But so that will fix the problem. Yeah. So. I meet my management team every Monday morning between uh, 10.30 and, and 12 o'clock yeah. and it's phones off, focus, like things that happened the week before, where are we at, et cetera. Um, <clears throat> I meet the, the, my team leaders one-on-one -on -one after that the very following day. Then I've got set appointments, recruiting part of the week, um, media part of the week, um, visiting other offices part of the week. It, it's all it's all You've easy. put it yeah. in there. And I just keep doing the same thing. So effectively, I'd be easy to shoot. You could know where I'm going to be every week. Yeah. Um, That's why you're such a think, nice guy. Think, and think, you know, things happen, but the thing is, if you just decided, um, if you had a one-on-one -on -one with every person every week for 10 minutes over a quick coffee back-to-back, -back, mm -hmm. how many staff you got? So I've got, uh, there's 14 of us at the moment. 14, yeah. okay. Here's what I would do. If I, I give it, it's a reasonably good-sized office. I, I don't care whether it's the person on the front desk or you know, your part-time cleaner that sits in the mm. office or um, a part-time property manager or a sales agent or whatever, I would have 14 – because you're the team leader, right? Yeah, they correct. want to talk to you. They want to hear from you. They want to f feel and touch. Mm. I would have that – I would break that into two days and I would see seven – one probably seven on Monday, seven on Friday, 14 of them, yep. right? I'd have 10-minute coffees with them 
to just get somebody to get ten cappuccinos or whatever, or seven cappuccinos on Monday and seven cappuccinos in the Monday. office mat or outside the I'd office. Just put them in. The, you got a meeting room. Yeah, the meeting. Yep. Yeah. Bang, bang, bang. Or go to that little um, coffee shop around in Corner. the, yeah. in the shopping those guys center. yell out at each yeah, other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 they actually make not a bad coffee. Coffee too. Yeah. <laughs> um, there's actually a new coffee shop that's just opened in that centre. Centre so, as well. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So there you go. See, so there's plenty of joint. Look. Um, I'm a big believer of probably I, I, where Cloud is. Going. I, I'd meet outside the office. Yeah. Because if someone sometimes somebody cries or when you you know you yeah, just, yeah, yeah, you yeah, don't I know, know gonna, if people have got issues yeah, they want to talk about yeah. and you don't want them doing that necessarily in the no. office. So I would go and I'd keep it real low. I don't think you need to be in the back of a coffee shop. I'd be out in the marketplace. Yeah, yeah, it's 100%. not a bad thing. Do a bit of networking. Um, so you could sit there and you could have seven one-on-ones for ten minutes, and they, all you need to do really simple, right? They're ten minutes. Have a coffee. Tell me how's life. That's the first question you need to ask him every week. Is there anything I can do for you? What's working? What's not working? Mm. That's it. That's it. That's what I want. I love it. I love how's it. life? Okay, because that's going to give you. Oh, I had a drama last week. You'll get the answer straight away, yeah. right? You'll know where you're going. Then you know where you're going. Just how's life? So Nick, tell me how's life. Everyone wants to tell you how, how life is. Yeah, people want to talk about. Oh, you wouldn't believe it. My son broke his ankle last week. For but what's happening? Go home. Get out of here. This is stuff I do, right? Hmm. So somebody tells me one. Somebody rang me the other day and said their son. That's why I use that example. Was skateboarding broke his ankle, right? And he said, um, "Oh no, but my husband." I said, no, "No, no, 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 no. Pack up and go home." They're going, what do you mean? I go, pack up and go home. Just because Dad's got him doesn't mean he doesn't want Mum. Mum, He's right. nine years old. Oh, really? I didn't think... I said, no, 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 no. This is not a game of... This is not a business about how much we can squeeze a lemon, right? Your son needs you. Go home. And she texts me that night and said, I'm going to work the rest of the night from home because he's fine and his mates are over and all that. I, I didn't see... Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I see didn't. where you're going with it. Yeah. Right, mm. and it's just about how you... That's culture to me, right? So 100%. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I wouldn't have found a problem unless I asked how's life. Correct. Exactly. Yeah. Unearth something I wouldn't yeah. have even unearthed. Yeah. I would have walked past and said, hey, you're going to see you later, go, I'm busy. Yeah. And I'm done, right? If I don't sit down and have that communication. Absolutely. How's life? How can I help you was the next question. What's working, what's not working? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, you're going to find... And not focusing on numbers or anything no, no, else. No, 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 no numbers. No, no, no. That's not what we KPIs. Do. How are you going? Show me your how's KPIs. Your, how's your life going? Not right. interested. I'll yeah. get the KPIs. Yeah, when I get the person right. Yeah, so. yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, and you know, and you know, the funny thing is, I'm just looking, reflecting my real estate career, Maddie, when I was working um, at LJ Hooker Bondi Junction, and look at my mentor, and just about accessibility. But he was very disciplined, John Gordon. Yeah, he was one of my operator. first. Yeah, great operator. And I remember he said, "Guys, if you want to see me, you can see me between eight thirty and nine thirty each morning. My door will be open. Twelve thirty to one o'clock, you can come in and see me. I'll be there if you need to come and have a chat." or in the afternoons between 5 and 5.30. So people knew three times a day, so he would have no interruptions in between because he would do his calls and do the things that matter most so he could just get focused and get into it. But people knew that if they had a question to ask him, because some people just want to go and ask a question, that they were the three times in the day that he was accessible to. Obviously, similar operation to you. He had about like 10 to 12, 14 um, people yeah. in his office. But people knew that if they had to have go and ask him a question, they could do it, could you know. Do it, yeah. But they couldn't go at 10.30 because they knew yeah. John's door was closed. He was in productivity mode, doing what he did best, you know. And I think once people know that, they respect you for it as well. Yeah, people yeah. don't care how much you know until they know how much you care, right? Mm -hmm. So if you care, like if, you, if they had, wow, I've get a, I get a one-on-one -on -one with my boss every week. Mm. That's unheard of in the industry. Yeah, 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 yeah right? totally. Because I'm, I'm not going to give you the, the secret herbs and spices away but in terms of recruiting. Like when I'm out there, the no. first question I normally ask um, people is, how often do you catch up with your principal? Mm. When was the last time you had a one-on-one -on -one with your principal? Mm. I actually mm. ask people that, yeah, that, are, yeah. that are joining us. I'm just curious to see if I'm on track or off track with whatever with what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they say I never do it. Mm. Mm. So that's something that I do with my team. Yeah, like regularly. Um, Beautiful. So not uh, like once a day, but we catch up in the morning for 10 minutes together. As a team? As a team. That's great culture. Yeah. yeah, and that's just a quick sort team of... Team huddle, team yeah, huddle. Yeah, team huddle. You know, just so we know what we're doing. Beautiful. Who, imagine, you know, if you, imagine if you had a one-on-one -on -one with everyone in the office. Yeah, I think I'd like... Imagine what, what you'd uncover. Yeah, yeah. Like oh, the front totally. office would be telling you, oh, you know, we're getting issues with this. The property manager saying this system's not working. They're, they're not going to come and really probably tell you. They go, oh, Nick's busy. I don't want to bother Yeah, yeah that's exactly Because I happens. used to get the Matt's too busy. Everyone says, you go walk around here, they go, oh, Matt's really busy. <laughs> yeah. We don't bother him with that yeah. stuff, right? That's exactly. And it's nice, but it's also not nice. 
Mm. So I just the way I extract it is have the one on ones. Yeah, I no. think that's awesome to do with the whole team. And I you know, the other it. thing, Nick, is if you watch me when we leave this, mm. I'm going to do a walk around the office before I leave and see every single person and say, "How are you going? Do you need anything? You have got everything you need?" Blah blah. Then I've I'm heard you say that. Yeah. And can, I'm going to do it when I leave here. Watch. Can Nick go around with you and hold your hand Come doing with it? Us. Come hold with it. Us. Can you hold your hand while he's doing it? Come with <laughs> us. No, so I'm not because you know what? Like, um, it doesn't mean a lot, but it does mean a lot because people. Oh, like, I think it means think a lot like to me when yeah, I work. Yeah, because I've always worked for someone up until, and I think it means and a lot. And my team hate going anywhere with me because they know I'll just stop and then get. If someone's got an issue, I'll be in the coffee shop with them straight away. Yeah. If I walk around there and someone's got a problem, I'll be in the coffee shop. Everything can can disappear because that's the most important thing, right? Yeah. Uh, when you start treating, that's the the talk about saying yeah, about yeah. worrying about people, right? Um, and and you you just if you turn that into your business. Everywhere you go, then people want to talk to you. They want to work. People with want you. to work with you. They want to work with you because of that actual reason. I love that, Matt. That's awesome. Like, that is it's really. It's not awesome. hard, though, Nick. It's a funny thing. Um, everyone's too cool today. I don't need to. Yeah. That's the sales manager's job. I don't care. Sales manager sitting there. I'm going to go over there. I'm going to bring the sales manager with me. We're going to go for a walk. Yeah, yeah. Love it's it. Not, I'm not cutting over love anyone. It. I'm just helping the sales manager grow because to where they I want to make to sure be. they know they're walking yeah. around while, though I'm not here as well, you know. And you learn something of them as well. Like, yeah, I'm exactly. sure that's the type of person you are. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, have we answered your question today, Nick? Guys, honestly, it does. Awesome. <laughs> um, I've been to a lot of training seminars and paid a lot of money. I haven't. <laughs> Can I tell you? Can I? Can I tell you, Nick? You you've won an award today. You know what the award is? Sorry. The longest episode of the mentors. Let's give it. I just good think content. Clouds yeah. too. I think you should give him another award because you know, like we've met a lot of agents. Humility is a big thing in this business. Absolutely. I can see why you are so successful, thank you, Nick. Thank you. Thank good you. Good on you, mate. Thank and you. and, and, and I'll you. double bang that as well, thank buddy. You. All right. Thank Thanks for joining us on episode six, Mr. Nick Pappas. High five, Mr. Matt Lahood. We are wrapping up. And Mr. Sprinkler dot media in the background oh, there. He's actually still here. I didn't. See him. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Clinton. We'll catch you next time on the Mentors. Got something great from this episode? It would mean the world to us if you passed it on. Tune in each week as we mentor a new agent. Have a question? Want to be on the show? Get in touch with Claudio Encina, Matt LaHood, or visit our Facebook page. The Mentors is brought to you by Sprinkler.media.